watch us play live on twitch.tv slash Mogdan. I think it's time to show you something amazing. I think it's time to show you one of the meta builds and explain why this is the meta build. You guys wanted me to showcase different builds, different PvP builds, different PvE builds. I want to show you a build that I've used in the past, uh, I don't know, two hours, one hour, something like that, with great success in Corrupted Dungeons. The build goes like this. It's Mage Cow, third spell, first passive. Mercenary Jacket, third spell, first passive. Cultist Sandals, same thing. Sometimes you might want to swap. I'll explain when and why. You want to have Dead Givers with the first Q, fourth W, and first passive. If you don't have this W, this build does not really work because this is the default one you want to stay on. Otherwise, you want to have Tethod Cape. Like, besides, you want to have Tethod Cape, you want to have Healing Pots, and you want to have a Beef Stew, which I don't have because I already used mine. This build is the Brawler set. It's not just a Brawler set, it's THE Brawler set. I'm not a good Brawler. I'm not good with Dead Givers. I've been playing Cursed lately. I've only been good with the Assassin set of Dead Givers, which now, unfortunately, is kind of dead. The Brawler set, however, made me, even though I didn't know exactly how to play it, made me have great success. I think I've only lost once so far, and that was because of uh, certain attacks that I received from people inviting me in a custom arena match. That's the only time I died so far. This has got to say something, because as you can see, I'm not particularly good at Corrupted Dungeons at the moment. Let me explain, though, why this build is so strong. First of all, this build is very strong because of how fast you can stack your Qs. The Qs themselves don't do that much damage. The main reason you want to stack them, I mean, there's two main reasons you want to stack them. First of all, is the Sunder Armor Charge, which reduces the damage resistance to your opponent, basically. And second of all, you want to stack them because you want to use your E for free. Yes, you heard that right. If you have three Q stacks, you have a free E. Free in terms of cooldown. But as you can see, even if you miss that, the cooldown is 20 seconds. Now, this is the general setup that you want to have with those abilities right here. If you're fighting a Kaida, you might want to swap this to run because you're not going to get full advantage of this. Though you can try. And definitely, you want to swap this to Inferno Shield. Because again, you're not going to get full advantage of Bloodlust. And this is why you just don't want to use it. This just gives you a little bit more protection against those nasty, nasty bow attacks. And also, last but not least, you also want to change to this. Now, it's not always something you want to change to because this makes you take a little bit more damage. But I would say if you just adopt a little bit more of a Kairi plate style, you could make this work. This is the one that I've used so far and I have, I have uh, great success with it. Basically, you stack up and you jump to your opponent whenever it... Uh, it allows you to use your E for free. So whenever we have three good stacks. If you use this, however, be aware of the fact that this ticks five times, not six times. So let's say you have this on you. You see that uh, you're already starting to stack up. You use your E and you see them stacking again. And you're like, oh, that's great. I don't need to reset it. Let me wait so I can use another E. Don't do that because this is what will happen. Boom, they disappear. Always, whenever you do your E for free, like let's say I do this, I stack up and I do my E for free by using this Q. That's a very important caveat. I need to cancel my Q and activate it again, all right? That's basically what you want to be doing. But more often than not, you're going to be either on this queue or on this queue. This is also a very good queue for Kairas. Most people use this for Kairas, and I understand why it gives you extra mobility. But personally, whenever I'm fighting against the Kaira, I would much rather go in kinding mode myself. I don't think it's the meta to use this. I think the meta would be to use this, but I'm just going to show you what I use, and uh, this is why I use it, because it, it helps me do my E much more effectively. Though sometimes, whenever you're fighting Kairas, you might want to use your E whenever it's not at full stacks. All right, some other important abilities that you need to keep track of is the W. This is uh, probably one of the most important abilities. This can be used to engage and most importantly to interrupt. This can interrupt the cursed E. This can interrupt the claymore E. This can interrupt the, um, let me see, it can interrupt the jump from um, brawler gloves. It can basically interrupt a lot of things. It can even interrupt fire staffs. There's a lot of interruptible abilities in the game. This can take care of every single one of them, including the ball casters E, the uh, silencing shot of uh, crossbows. It is just great for interrupting things. And you mainly want to use it for that. But because, you know, it's on such a low cooldown, you can just use it whenever and however you feel like. The other ability that you need to keep in mind is this. Uh, there's not much to it, but a great tip that a viewer gave me at some point is that I should precast this. But let's say that mob is a player. I see there's a player over there. I cast, it, I cast this on myself and this stays on me for like 15 seconds. And I just wait. I just wait. I just wait. And whenever I can engage, boom. And now instead of this ability going on a 30 seconds cooldown from the second I activated it on my opponent, it goes on a 20 seconds cooldown because I precasted it. So I just get it a little bit faster. Shadow Edge, as a matter of fact, ignores Firewall, but all your opponent needs to do, like all the Fire Staff needs to do, is just go on the other side of the Firewall. So let's say there's a Firewall right there, boom, I jump over it, but my opponent can just cross on the other side himself. So uh, yes, it's useful. No, it does not cancel it. It just ignores it for once. But it's a great thing to use because, for example, let's say you can Shadow Edge through the firewall, position yourself, then E. And that way you're uh, on the other side of the firewall yourself or you're staying on the same side of the firewall. Like you want to make sure you position your E. The other thing that you want to keep in mind is this. The main way I've used this so far is to cancel the opponent defenses. Right now, um, 
Hunter Hood is the absolute meta for basically everything. To be honest, you, you can even use Hunter Hood with this build right here. The reason I'm not using Hunter Hood is because this just gives much more damage, and this is what this build shines at, at dealing absurd amount of damages. So I just wanted to keep it that way, but you can most definitely use Hunter Hood. But the reason this cancels out the Hunter Hood is because this heals you for all the damage that you take from the Hunter Hood, as long as you don't go crazy and start using your E's. Like, let's say your opponent popped Hunter Hood, you don't want to stop attacking if you have this available. You want to activate this on yourself, keep attacking, stack those three Q stacks, and then whenever the um, uh, defenses go down, use your E. Even if your opponent is in an ice block from the credit cow, you can still stack your Qs. Regardless, if they're this Q, the second Q, or the third Q, you can still attack to stack your Qs. Make sure you do that. Yes, you're not going to do damage to your opponent, absolutely, but you're going to stack up. And whenever your opponent goes down from uh, ice block, you just boom, E through them. The playstyle of this build is a very aggressive in-your-face type of playstyle. You want to stay right next, locked on your opponent. If your opponent runs, you run with him. Uh, and whenever your opponent gets to like 50% HP, that's the moment in which you want to pop Rotten Ground. Which, by the way, I think I forgot to show this. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the other armor piece that you want to use. For shoes, you want to use Cultist Sandals, Third Spell, uh, Second Passive. I'm not sure if I showcase this. The Rotten Ground basically makes it so your opponent takes much, much more damage. Like, this increases the damage. It feels like stripping them off of armor, basically. You just go there and deal as much damage as this build can, can dish out while your opponent is just left there defenseless. You do not want to use this whenever your opponent is at full HP because he might have defenses. You want to use this in a moment in which your enemy is just left sitting there, defenseless, run used, Hunter Hood used, Cleric uh, Robe and Cleric cowl used everything used just pop this and watch him melt uh as some fight examples i mean just check this out perfection Come on, one more. Come on, one more. I had to use it. It... I couldn't have done anything else. Nice. Woo! Nice kill, boys! This is a SWAT. This requires double chin mug. Come here, man. I got you. Okay, I'm not fat enough for this. Ah, you have block, you tiny pesky thing. You have block, you tiny pesky thing. Do you think your block will save me from my wrath? It won't. What are you changing? You're pretty good at this, aren't you? You're pretty good at this, aren't you? I mean, engaged mist, but hey, does not matter. Yeah, to be honest, I can just do this. Boom! Oh, you missed! Oh, you missed, my friend! Oh, you missed that, didn't you? Oh, you kind of missed over there, didn't you, sir? Get out of here! Nice fight. Yeah, you, you dead, you dead. Come on. Come on, poison, do your thing. Ah, poison, man. Nice! Oh, that was really close. Oh, that was really close. Oh, that was really close. That was really close. Oh, that was really close. That's a good fight, man. Kairos with the Brawl set don't go together. Kairos with the Brawl set do not go together, let me tell you. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash mockdown. This video was made possible by our amazing channel members. If you want to support by becoming a channel member yourself, you are going to get access to amazing emotes that you can use in the comment section or during live streams, member-only polls, and lots of other awesome perks. Shout out to all of you awesome badasses. Thank you so much for supporting us.